Hey there, adventurers. I'm Mary, and welcome to my patch 6.3 speculation video. Before we get started, you should know that there are spoilers ahead for the main scenario and for Final Fantasy IV. Also, while I try to base my speculation in as much lore as possible, please do not take any of my theories as fact. All three of the post-Endwalker patches have added to the story of a goldsmith who is obsessed with void-scent ladies. I think this expansion of his lore is leading up to him crossing over from flavor text to main scenario relevance. Now, in order to properly speculate his role in the story, we should discuss what's known about him so far. He was first introduced in A Realm Reborn in the minion guide entries for the Wind-Up Succubus and the Puff of Darkness. They claim that the minions are the product of a Gridanian goldsmith, who was recently hanged for performing dark rituals, but somehow cheated death and is still making minions. The story is expanded in Heavensward with the addition of three more minions and the discovery of his journal in the Great Google Library. The journal tells us of the dark ritual that caused his arrest. An earlier journal entry can be read in a special instance of Gubo Library during the Red Mage job quest. A second journal can be found in the restricted archive in Old Charlian that confirms our goldsmith has been to the 13th. We meet the Mind Flayer that was unintentionally summoned during his ritual in Zero's domain and learn that he can get violent when things don't go his way. And finally, a missive in Lapis Manalis tells of his origins as an apprentice doll maker who defected in search of an unparalleled beauty, leaving the Reapers without the means to replenish their training mannequins. The spelling of mannequins here is the same used in the Fractal Continuum, as the name of the constructs the Alligans invented to take the place of a living army. This hints at the possibility that our goldsmith may have knowledge of a closely guarded Alligan technology. Shoutouts to Spellbound Tutor who brought this to my attention in the 6.3 easter egg video comments. So what if I told you this was only half the story? It turns out that the Japanese text for the Void Scent Minions tells a slightly different tale. Instead of being hanged for his crimes, the goldsmith was released from prison and left a note saying that he was going to travel to another world. The Japanese text for the wind-up echidna bears an inscription that reads, I jumped into the gateway with a desire to return home and found myself in a strange ship. There I met a sleeping beauty. So it sounds like our goldsmith found his way to Void Ark. Wind Up Calafisteri continues the story. Someone who was watching the battle between the adventurer and Calafisteri from the shadows poured his passionate pathos into the doll and improvised it. Later, he disappeared with the fading void scent. This phrase, Toaro Cho Kinshiga, or a certain goldsmith, is repeated in the minion descriptions and even shows up in the Wind Up Omega M and F, Wind Up Lakshmi, and Wind Up Azema and Halone. Bearing all this in mind, what is the goldsmith's real story, since some of this information contradicts each other? There's no way to know for sure just yet, but here's the version of events I think is the most likely. Our goldsmith friend started out in Lapis Manalis as an apprentice to their doll master. Fueled by the Reaper Order's gradual decline, he sets off on a journey to find unparalleled beauty instead of succeeding his master. He travels the realm, making minions when coming across an inspiring subject. Lady Amandine frequently commissioned our goldsmith and he was summoned to Hawk Manor after her transformation into a Void Scent. Enraptured by the new Lady Amandine, he became obsessed with the Void and attempted to summon a succubus of his very own. The ritual failed, 
and a mind flayer was brought forth from the void instead. The goldsmith's reaction was violent, and the mind flayer retreats from the vessel back to the 13th. Gridanian officials arrest him for performing the dark ritual, and he is later released. His obsession with the void led him to journey to the 13th, where he met the Cloud of Darkness. He stepped through a void gate to return to the source, and wound up on the Void Ark. Somehow, he ends up in the Weeping City of Mach, where he witnesses the Warrior of Light fight Calophisteri. He resumes his wandering, while keeping tabs on the Warrior of Light to see what beauty we may come across. It's really anyone's guess as to how our goldsmith will make his grand main scenario entrance. It might be as simple as Yishtola finding his journal that chronicles how he makes void gates at whim. Or maybe he shows up as a sub-boss to try and stop us from killing sexy void set. Let me know what role you'd like to see our goldsmith friend play down in the comment section. Anytime there's a recurring symbol in Final Fantasy XIV, it gives me pause. The reveal of Golbez's moon base shows this platform is the same design as the staves used to communicate over long distances. I believe this symbol belongs to one of the two missing Asians, Pastorot. Now, let me back up and explain why this symbol might be Pastorot. The 13 Asians are named after the Scions of Light in Final Fantasy XII. Each Scion has an opposing Esper, which was sealed inside a crystal after going against the gods. Though I should mention that technically Ultima and Elidibus are the exceptions to this, since Ultima and Zodiac don't have associated Scions of Light. But that's a bigger topic for another video. The glyphs associated with each Esper are seen in part in each Asian's glyph mask. For example, we can see here that Lahabrea's glyph is a small part of his larger glyph, seen in Academia in Nieder, which is a stylized version of Mateus. The staves used by Golbez resemble this section of the Esper's glyph associated with Pastorot. And which Esper is that? Zero Miss. Zero Miss is based on the final boss of Final Fantasy IV, who is the personification of malice that's born after the defeat of Zemus. Zemus was the Lunarian who was manipulating Golbez's actions via mind control. Golbez's line during our Echo flashback through Ricante speaks to the Asian's revelation. Note that Golbez uses the plural possessive here, meaning he's been in contact with more than one Asian. We know that Igiorm is the Asian responsible for the downfall of the 13th, so who would the other Asian or Asians be? Elidibus could be a possibility, since we know he was on the 13th to rescue Unukalhai. But it doesn't rule out a third Asian involvement. Now, we don't know much about Pastrot, as he's only had one line of dialogue so far, but given that Golbez as a character has a history of being manipulated, it's not too much of a stretch that an Asian planted the idea of breaking the barrier between worlds. Any motive or reasoning beyond this would be pure conjecture, so I'm going to try something a little different. Let me know in the comment section what you think. If Pastorot is our Zemus manipulating Golbez, what's his endgame? Do you have a different theory that I didn't discuss? Tell me your speculation, and I'll make a response video showcasing my favorite ones. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't so you don't miss it. Thanks for watching, and until next time, adventurers, remember, you matter, and may you ever walk in the light.